church on Wednesday night. And as some of you may know, we're in a season of prayer and fasting. And you guys were on my heart. And it wasn't individually. I didn't have one of you specifically in mind. But my heart cry was, the youth are filled with worry. They are riddled with anxiety. And I know last week I preached a really, really passionate word about being filled with faith and allowing our faith to drive us and cast aside our fear. But this week, I really feel it on my heart that some of you are worried and anxious. And so fear is tied up to that. And so tonight, I'm going to come and deliver a word that I believe God wants to set you free. God knew we would be filled with worry. He knew it. And when Jesus came and he, he taught so many amazing things, and we're going to get to what he taught, but one of the things that Jesus addressed specifically was worry. And so if you have your Bibles, I would like for you to turn with me. We're going to go to the book of Matthew, chapter 6. And we're going to pick up in verse 25, and we're going to read through verse 34. If you don't have your Bibles, please don't worry. I do put the text on the screen so that you guys can follow along. So when we see what Jesus came to do, we know he had a mission and we know he is the greatest preacher to ever walk the earth and he is the divine leader and he is so many things. But when it came to this part of the text, I truly felt that tonight this was for for us as a, a group. It was for us. So if you're ready, let's lean in. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. I'm going to turn my mic off. It's, it's bouncing back. Do you guys hear me okay without the mic? So therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will, or what you will wear. Is, life, is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or star, store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying at a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and gone and, and here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? You of little faith. So do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. It is such a powerful piece of scripture. And for those of you who have your Bibles, when Jesus' words are in red, all of that would have been in red. Jesus preached what we know in the Bible as the Sermon on the Mount, and Matthew records this. And Jesus preached and taught on many principles. This one that he taught was found somewhat, maybe not quite in the middle, maybe more towards the end, but it was right after the cares of money. So Jesus knew that we would worry, and he knew that those worries would oftentimes be attached to the things that we believe we need. But when we really look into this passage and what we're going to spend some time looking at tonight briefly is what we're confusing here, guys, is we are confusing our needs versus our wants. We all want a lot of things and we spend our lives tirelessly working towards achieving those things. And so when we feel that we need to work harder, strive harder and just really grind it to get it. We become a people filled with worry. And what happens is we lose sight of what is a need 
versus what is a want. And this world today feeds us and it bombards us in our social media, on TV, like it's everywhere. We are being bombarded with things that people are telling us you should want this. That you actually, they even void the word want and they actually make you believe you need this. And when you do not have a sound base to stand upon, this world will confuse you, which is why I can preach a message on fear, but anxiety is something that probably riddles you more than worry. Worry will worry you more, pardon me, than fear. And that's because we are a culture filled with worry. When I did some study over the statistics, I don't have the exact numbers, but it is alarming. The generation that you guys find yourself in is the generation by leaps and bounds that have shown cases of chronic anxiety. Chronic. We're not talking about minor things anymore. You guys have, and I'm not saying you guys in general, just saying the generation that you find yourself in is now become a people that is riddled with so much anxiety and worry. When we look to this text that Jesus taught, he's telling us, don't be a worrier. Because if we are, what he's saying in this text is, oh, you of little faith. So we don't actually think of worry as a lack of faith, but God does. God does. And tonight I'm here to shed light to that. And I'm here to set some of you free tonight. You guys need to be free from this worry that is riddling and taking your peace. It is stealing your joy. It is confusing your identity because this worry is become toxic. And tonight I want to build up your faith. So when we go into this world and we are bombarded by what social media is telling us, what we need, you have a sound understanding on a biblical truth that you will wave and you will win a battle in ways that are not about fighting. It's not a fight. There's a war and I've preached that message. I'm not going there tonight. But we understand this battle is won in a measure of faith. So in this text, we see two understandings. Jesus knew, guys, that we would worry about our basic needs, which is why he addresses it, where he says, don't worry about food, don't worry about drink. But then he even knew we would worry about our image, which is why he says, don't worry about your clothes. But what I find beautiful is the question that he asks. He says the point clearly, don't worry about your food, don't worry about your drink, don't worry about your clothes. Because then he asks the critical question, isn't life more than food? and your body more than clothing. So he's not saying that those things are not important, but he is saying like, if God is going, and then he compared it with the bird and the flower. And he's like, if God who created this bird, this bird doesn't go and store for himself a barn filled with bird niblets. I don't know what birds eat, bird seeds, bird niblets. I don't know what that was, but bird seeds, you know, they don't store for themselves those things. Yet they wake up every morning with no worry that their basic needs for food will be met. And God is sustaining them. And then Jesus goes even further and says, what about this flower, this beautiful flower that is here one day, God the next, it doesn't worry. And God clothes that flower with the rain that it needs, the sun that it needs, the dew that it needs. How much more will your heavenly father cover you, give you? Specifically, you guys, we are his masterpiece. There's a reason we were created last. We are his crown jewel. Not only that, friends, those of you who know the book of Genesis know that we're created in his image. And so that is a reflection upon our heavenly father who's saying, if you would just trust me, if you would just trust me that I not only will meet your needs, but that I actually know what your needs are. And that's the confusion today. We've been confused. Everything, we no longer know what our wants are. Everything has become a need. Everything has become a need. But Jesus is telling us, your heavenly father is faithful to give you everything you need. And he also knows exactly what those needs are. We just need to trust in him. Jesus tells us that God's concern for us is immeasurable. Like it's without limits. He would give us everything that our heart would desire. The Bible even tells us, Jesus says this, ask anything in my name and I will give it to you. 
Where we get wrong is many of us leave these places filled with the Holy Spirit and we go out and we get confused once again between our needs and our wants. I would love to have a billion dollars. I don't need a billion dollars. I would love to have a thousand Instagram subscribers or followers or whatever. Do I need that to be validated? Do I need that to know who I am in Christ? I would love to have the top line of every clothing that every store, you clearly know I'm out of my element here. I don't know name brands, but I would clearly love to have the best of every name brand of clothing. But is that what I need? I know when I look into my closet, I have more than enough to put on my back and God is true and he's saying, I will clothe, I will supply for your basic need, your need. Have we become so confused? We have, let's be real, we have. So what's the solution? What is the solution? Jesus taught it and I want to just, just park there for one quick second. So does this mean that when we're saying God will supply all of our needs, he will meet our needs. Not only will he supply our needs, he knows what our needs are. So does this mean that it's always going to go well for us? That we will never find ourselves in a position of wanting something? Will that, is that what I'm saying to you tonight? No, that is not what I'm saying to you. And that is not what, jo- what Jesus was saying either. God does not promise us a problem-free life. We all know this. But what he does promise is that he knows what you are going through and he will be right there with you and he will give you what you need to get through that storm, that confusion, whatever it is that is confusing you guys in your worry. So here's the the solution. So we've looked at some pretty compelling words of Jesus. We see how he's telling us not to worry. But so how do we defeat it? You know I don't come up here preach this message without giving you something to put in your hat and take with you. So how do we do it? Do you want to know? Can I get an amen? Amen. Let's find out. Jesus has such a simple answer. It's simple but yet complicated in in the same way. So this is a part of the promise. And we found it in Matthew 6, verse 33, when Jesus tells us, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be given unto you. That is the key. The answer to a worry-free life is to seek first the kingdom of God. And you're like, great, that was a let up. How do, I, how do you do that? Like, really, Nancy? I'm glad you're posing that question because it's the same one I had. How do we do it? I told you, I don't come up here to just preach something and expect you to figure out. That's my job to help you. So how do we do that? How do we seek first the kingdom of God? These things become so simple in its fundamentalist core. If you are seeking God, in prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, that is the number one place to begin. By seeking his will, by seeking his face, by seeking his promises. And the thing is, as you grow in knowing what all of those things are for you and what God has planned for you, your worry begins to subside. The second part, guys, to this understanding that the kingdom, seeking first the kingdom, is God will give us what we need. He may not give us everything we want. And we need to stop being a people that are selfish and so entitled that we are almost unsatisfied with the things that we do have. We so quickly lose sight of it and then we wonder why we are a people filled with worry. As I close, There are three things to take away from tonight in this text to understand how do we walk this freedom out of being a people who are no longer filled with anxiety, filled with worry, filled with doubt, filled with confusion when it comes to our needs versus our wants. You need to understand this truth and stand on this promise. We will talk about it tonight during our discussion. So the first one is your heavenly father knows what we need. He knows what we need, but you need to believe that he will provide it. It is one thing to know that, but unless you believe that, you are going to leave here just as worried as you came in. You need to believe it. The second one, don't worry about tomorrow's trouble today. My goodness, Jesus said it perfectly. Tomorrow's got enough trouble to worry about of itself. (laughs) And yet here we are as people, we are always 10 steps ahead, aren't we? Like we are always, we can't live in the moment. We are so desperate to control everything, to be the gods of our own lives, that we've become a people. No wonder you're anxious. You're trying to do God's job. 
How about we just sit for today and let today worry about today? Because God is faithful to telling us, I will deliver you through this day, I promise you. You may not get everything you want, but he promises to give us what we need. And our needs will look different. Like we don't all have the same needs because you've got to remember this is all for God's glory. So there are certain things he may give to Michaela that he ain't going to give to Melissa. Does it mean he loves them different? Absolutely not. He just knows what we need. He knows what we need. And that's, again, that brings us back to that issue of comparison. Nothing will rob you of your joy more than comparing. So stop it. Stop thinking and worrying about tomorrow and receive and believe that God got you in mind specifically, you specifically in mind. And then the third one is, can we just begin to be a people who starts to replace worry with prayer? Granted, you guys may not all be the prayer warriors, fine, but I'm sure you're filled enough with the spirit to put five words together to say, Lord, I'm anxious. Take it. Could you say those five words? I bet you all could. And when you believe in that moment that God shows up like a flood, the earth shakes, the skies open. Okay, not literally, but in our hearts. Come on, when God shows up in those moments when you're desperate and you are so worried that it's making you sick, you just need to do those five words. Lord Jesus. I'm anxious. Take it. That might be six words. I think I might add an extra one there, but you get my point. Philippians chapter four, verse six through eight. I preached on this message not long ago, and I said this verse is a lot of Christians' favorite, and I wanted to re regurgitate it for us tonight to remind us truly of this truth that Jesus taught, and now we find it in a letter that Peter wrote, Paul wrote, part, beg your pardon. So he said, and if you know it, you can read it with me. It'll be on the board. So do not be anxious about anything. Can we say that one again? Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And, and this is how you unlock the, pro un unlock the promise. And once you do that, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and guard your minds in Christ Jesus. And if that isn't enough, to, to get you in on this and saying, I want some of that. Let's look into this one. First Peter wrote it this way. Peter wrote it this way in first Peter chapter five, cast all your anxiety. Say it with me. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. You know, and we could really go through the scripture and just start pulling out every time we're told to give our burdens to God. Do you know what this demonstrates when we do it, friends? When we do this, it demonstrates our faith. And what did Jesus say at the very beginning? You of little faith. He's telling us the key is tied to our belief. So if you believe that you can be anxious for nothing and cast all your cares onto God, believing that, that peace, that transcends, it makes no logical sense. Why in what you're living that you can have that kind of peace. But when you believe it, your faith unlocks the power of Jesus in our lives. Try it. We're going to actually try it tonight together. We're going to sit. We're going to talk about this. And then we're going to do a little breakout. And we're going to bring the worship team back up. We're actually going to turn down the lights so that they're not distracting. And this is going to be a rendezvous between you and God. So tonight we're going to play a game and then after the game we're going to huddle back to the front and we're going to we're going to really do this. We're going to do this as a body filled with faith that God's going to show up and meet with us here tonight. So listen to me. If you are a war warrior, not a warrior, a warrior, God wants to heal you. He wants to heal you of that tonight. He has given us his promise. He has given us his protection. And he gives us his word that he will provide everything that we need. And if you believe that, you can be a people with no more worry. And I'm not trying to minimize it. I get it. We have a scary world that we live in. And there are some things that it's hard to see how God can move. But if you have the faith to believe it, he does show up in powerful ways. So we have a choice to make tonight. And it's A or B. You choose. A. 
we can keep worrying. And by that, we'll ruin, we'll continue to ruin our mental and physical health. And it will slow our spiritual development. Or B, we cast our cares on the strong shoulders of our loving Savior, who has promised to give us his peace. And with that, I close. God bless you guys.